Greetings, fam, and welcome to Love and Spree, the podcast. Today, we are talking all about mental health and depression in relationships. If you've ever been depressed, full of anxiety in your relationship, and you want to know how to navigate it, you want to stick around for this episode. I'm your host, Angie Roll, the teen wife that turned my relationship struggles into strength, marital woes into wins, and made the mistakes so you don't have to. I've conquered the mission on how to build a successful relationship. So stick around with me and let's talk love. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to episode 46. Today we're talking about depression in relationships. But before I get into this heavy topic, I want to tell everyone that my husband said he will be back soon. I don't know. We'll see next episode. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I just wanted him. I know he listens to my podcast when he's not on it. So, I just wanted him to know that I told you guys what he said. So, <laughs> anyway, today we're talking about depression and relationships. I totally don't have an outline. Uh, so, if this sounds kind of all over the place, I sincerely apologize. But these are just my thoughts and my transparency at the particular moment about suffering with depression in your relationship and or marriage. So, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was talking to somebody very, very close to me. I'm not going to identify who it was just because it's, it's not necessary. Just know it was somebody close to me, but it was not my husband. And we were talking about her problems. We were talking about everything that she was going through. And I said to her, just as a reminder, not to hurt her feelings or anything that, you know, everybody has problems. You know, I, she was like, and I told her, I was like, I have problems. So her response was, well, you have somebody to talk to. And so it kind of hurt my feelings because it kind of diminished my problems based on the fact that you think problems get better because somebody may have somebody to talk to. And although, and she was talking about my husband. And so I immediately, my feelings got hurt because I'm like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't take away from my issues. That doesn't make them go away because I have somebody to talk to about it. And honestly, you can have somebody to talk to, but they may not respond how you want them to respond. They may not say what you want the, what you want said or how you want it said. You may just want to vent and they may be um, giving you some sound advice, but you don't want that sound advice right now because all you want to do is vent. And of course, I love my husband. I love talking to my husband, but he doesn't always respond how I want him to respond. There's times where I'm like, well, dang, I should have just kept it to myself. Even though it's something that I may need to hear at that particular moment, it's not something that I want to hear. And so I kind of got in my feelings when somebody said this because little did she know I was suffering or have been suffering with period depression for the last few months. And it's really kind of taken over my life january was a better month than the um last couple the previous months before that and this month in february or last month because this is march that i'm filming this but january um was probably the best month that i had and the reason why i had that best month is because i had a specific routine in place and i'm going to get to that in a minute when i share my tips on how to help you if you're suffering with depression in your relationship and marriage but just know that the routine really helped me and i was able to cope with it so you know she says this i kind of get my feelings i call my husband and i tell him like i'm really upset that she would say that because it's like oh well your problems don't matter because you have somebody to talk to and where i'm going with that and in, in sharing this story in general is you can't judge a book by its cover we know this and i don't understand why we continue to do this you can't just assume somebody's happy because they had a smile on their face or because they're doing their daily activities there's functional depression out here and for the last month, three months, I've been dealing with functional depression, period depression. It comes nine days before my cycle. And as soon as I come on, it ends. It, but in those nine days, I am just totally not myself. I don't feel myself. I don't act myself. And it kind of takes a toll on me. And I didn't know and identify what it was until... I was about three, four months into it when I discovered exactly what the heck was going on with me and that it is a thing, period depression. It's called PMDD. And so 
I kind of just got very lazy. I kind of just got unmotivated. And this is what depression looks like. You're unmotivated. You're sad. I was just very sad. I was always thinking about everything that was going wrong when, when I wasn't on my period. I wasn't even thinking about that. Even when stuff went wrong. Even when I, uh, you know, miss things or I mess up. Like, I wasn't even thinking about, oh, it was just like, oh, it's a mistake. But when that time came, it everything just enhanced to next level. And, of course, I tell you all the time, you know, to be whole when you enter a relationship. But the truth is we're going to go through things where moments we're not going to be whole. We're going to go through, th go through things where we're not, the relationship is not going to be 50-50. It's going to be 90-10. It's going to be 80-20. It's going to be 70-30. It's never truly, I mean, sometimes it can be 50-50. But on days where your partner is feeling down, which has been my case, you have to be that person to carry that load and lift them up where they need to be lifted and so I had been experiencing all this nobody really knew I was still going to church I still had a smile on my face I still showed up on social media if you watch my stories or if you've seen TikToks I did I'm fighting through these things and these feelings and the last month in February it kind of trickled over into after my cycle where I kind of just was overwhelmed with where I was in life and things that I think, things that I think that I'm missing out on. And I kind of had a breakdown with my husband the other day and I was just telling him, you know, he knew exactly what was wrong. And guys, I'm very transparent and honest and open. One day I may share these feelings, but I'm not gonna go into detail just because I'm already sharing a lot to begin with. And I just, everything is not, I share as God, tells me to share so one day I probably will share exactly what it is but right now I'm not going to do that so I was just sharing you know telling him with where I felt I was missing in life or you know all of these things and we had a very very deep conversation we actually been having some really really deep conversations lately we had one last week about insecurities this week was more about you know depressive state and, and things of that sort and so if I have one piece of advice to give to you guys when it comes to being depressed in your relationship, you're in a relationship, you're in a marriage, you have another person that's being affected by your behavior. And that specific thing is to communicate. You have to overly communicate when you're feeling inadequate, when you're feeling depressed, when you have anxiety, because your partner does not know. Of course they can gauge, of course my husband saw, hey, she's not doing this she's she's not as motivated as she was she stopped working out this week what's going on you know she's starting to eat more junk food now he started noticing all these things of course he wasn't telling me and you know making fun of me and trying to you need to stop doing that or why are you doing that i think he kind of put it in the back of his head and then when i had that talk with him this past sunday he was able that's when he was to say i noticed certain things were going on but just because somebody notices things doesn't mean they know how to help you. Only you can identify and tell this person how they can help you, why you need the help, what is truly going on with you because you are the only person that knows your feelings. And you know, one thing that I wanna say when you're communicating is really, really dig to the root of why you feel this way or what's going on instead of nitpicking around of what your partner is doing wrong. I think that's a mistake we tend to make is we tend to, we don't want to talk about our feelings. So we kind of push it off on our partner and say, well, you're doing this or you're doing that as opposed to, all right, what's really wrong with you? Now that stuff may be annoying you, but it's not what's really bothering you. It's the fact that you may not be where you are want to be in life or you may de be depressed about your career or whatever the, whatever the case may be. So communicate these things. You cannot communicate enough when it comes to being depressed in relationships or having anxiety in your relationship. You have to communicate these things to your significant other. That's the only way that they can know exactly how to help you and what you truly need. It's okay to tell your partner, listen, this is giving me anxiety. This is what I need from you. And if you don't know what you need, then say that. But you can never just leave your partner in the dark because you you don't simply want to talk about your feelings. 
because that makes it that makes them feel on the other end and i wish my husband was here to you know talk from his point of view that could make the person on the other end feel like you know they're doing everything wrong or something is wrong with them or you know like i said you could have those feelings that why you keep forgetting to take out the trash why you keep doing this why you keep doing that and you could have those feelings but it's not really the root cause it's surface level things when you really have underlying things that you need to get off of your chest and work on so overly communicate to your significant other. Really, truly identify and talk about these things. And I told my husband today before I filmed this podcast that I think what I'm going to start doing is when I'm feeling the inadequacy of what I'm feeling, I'm just going to talk to him right then and there instead of letting it build up. I'm just going to get it out, get it off my chest and get some encouraging words from him so that I can move on you know freely instead of letting it fester because when you let your feelings fester when you keep them in all you're doing is i say this all the time is waiting for it to blow up in the end and then that's when you start having arguments and you start projecting onto your significant other because you have let your feelings fester overly communicate that's my that's my biggest advice to you is to overly communicate Another thing, I told you guys back in January, I was doing really, really well. And that's because I had a set routine in. And I, I didn't start the routine in January, but it was set in. It was locked in. I was going. And so I had a very, very good cycle. I was not depressed. I did not feel down. Routines really, truly, I, don't, I think people sleep on routines. I think people tend to think that, oh, routines is just something that, you know, that person does or rich people do or people that have it all together do no routines will literally help you get it all together and typically what a normal morning looks like for me is getting uh, getting up i get up i read my bible in the bed i get down on my knees and i pray i make my bed i brush my teeth wash my face get ready to work out work out then get ready and start my day for work so that gives me energy it helps me keep focus it helps me keep um, on the path and remembering that and, and you know the one thing that I want to say with prayer the only thing that I pray for in the morning I just say the Lord's prayer let that will be done I have to remember and I have to remind you guys too that God has a plan for us so although we may not be where we want to be in life and I know it's so hard to remember that when you're going through things but God has a divine plan for us and we cannot add to it we cannot take away we were designed to go through specific things each individual to each person and i had to learn to accept where i was and be okay with where i was and um, it was kind of hard because when you feel like you're missing something you're not really trying to think about the fact that there's other people missing more than you. You know, there's people that wish they were in your position, not in a jealous aspect, but just that obviously a homeless person wouldn't mind living in a dang on one, one room shack because they're homeless. So that's what I mean by that. So, you know, whatever you have to do in your routine that's just my you know part of my routine is praying because it's christ is, is very essential critical to have in my life and keeping me sane and things of that <laughs> that sort so get yourself a routine because it's going to help you stay on track it's going to keep you motivated and days where you don't feel like getting up and doing those things it's going to it's going to push you when you do that routine and you complete your routine it's going to push you to get through all the other obstacles and i think that's why in february i didn't have as great as a month as i did in january because what happened in february i was working out people that's my friend on apple watch you know that i was working out but if you look at the times i was working out i was working out sporadically it's three o'clock sometimes seven o'clock at night five o'clock it was all over the place it wasn't my normal routine so I had fell out of my routine and it caused me to fall out in other areas of life I was unmotivated I was kind of just all over the place routines truly truly help you stay on task they help you stay motivated they help you formulate good habits and it'll trickle over into your in like I said in other aspects of your life so get yourself a routine if you don't do anything else in your um 
to you know in your depression and anxiety get yourself a routine another thing that i um, think is very very important for mental health purposes is to guard your sleep because if you don't if you don't get sleep we know that sleep can cause psychosis sleep can cause you to see things sleep can cause you to act in a belligerent way sleep can cause sleep deprivation causes a lot and the other day monday i started you know back doing my routine i got up in the morning so of course my body was off it was way way off and so around i want to say three three o'clock i got very very sleepy so i told my husband we were on the couch and i was like don't let me fall asleep 20 minutes went by i'm dozing off i said don't let me fall asleep just give me just give me 20 minutes don't let me fall asleep I, don't y'all know i woke up at like five o'clock <laughs> And I told my husband, I'm like, I can never, why do you always do this to me? Like, when I tell you to not let me fall asleep, you just let me fall asleep anyway. He's like, you need your sleep. And it's so, so important. You have to guard your sleep. If your body is telling you, you need to sleep, then you need to sleep. Now, of course, we need to decipher between laziness and I just want to sleep. But if I got... If I go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm not getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to do my routine. We're just going to have to push the routine back. It doesn't matter when you do your routine. Your routine can be a nighttime routine. Your routine can be an evening routine. Who said when you should do your routine? I just said to have a routine. You should have a routine. At some point in the day, you should have something that you do that can motivate you, that can help you accomplish and stay on track. And that will trickle over, like I said, into other areas of your life. If I fall asleep at 12, 12, midnight, 1 o'clock, I'm not getting up at 6 in the morning to do no workout. It's just not happening because I need to guard my sleep. I need to get as much sleep. And there's probably a sleep study out there. I probably should have, you know, reviewed that. But that's just my advice to you guys is to make sure that you're getting adequate sleep. Um, also, too, protecting your mind. My husband, when we had the conversation, when I had the little meltdown that I had, he told me, you know, your mind is, you know, once your mind goes... Sometimes it, it doesn't come back for people. So he always tells me to protect my mind. Um, when we were talking about this, protect your mind, protect your mind, because the mind is so fragile. That's where depression comes from. It's all in your mind. What do you think about when you're depressed? What's constantly going? It's things in your head, things in your mind. What you don't have, what you're lacking, self-doubt insecurities all of that is happening in your mind people can literally look at you and tell you you look beautiful but in your mind you're like i am ugly i told my husband i was like i got these two pimples on my chin i don't know if i think it's mask me it might be mask me or it might be um i don't know but i haven't had pimples on my face in a long time so it has to be mask me because it's around the chin and he's like, you can't even see that. And I was like, well, I can see it. I don't want to be on camera even doing YouTube videos with people that can see that. And not that I, not that I care, but I was kind of using it as an excuse as to, it was just an excuse. That's all it was. It was just a simple excuse as to why I couldn't do what I needed to do. And it was all in my head. It was all in my head. Because normally I am a person that just, I don't wear makeup. It's like, if you don't like the way I look, then don't look at me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not that I don't knock people that wear makeup. I don't knock people that, you know, use any kind of enhancements. It's just not, I'm not getting up early to do that. If you don't like the way I look, then look at me. And that's just always been my attitude. But so for me to care about two pimples on my face really showed me that it's all in my head. It's all in my mind. And you really really have to guard your mind because it's so so fragile and it's easy for people to attack even if you have to remove yourself from people that aren't uh, investing in you and what i mean by investing is empowering and motivating you and inspiring you in some kind of way in some kind of capacity then maybe you need to remove yourself out of their lives um, also another thing with you know depression in your relationship so watch what you intake I'm talking about on social media take social media breaks they're so so important to your life take social media breaks i'm talking about guarding what you watch on tv all of these things give you an illusion most of it is not reality most of it is not reality on social media now some some things are reality some things are real some people are 
rich rich. Some people have money to buy private jets and then some people are faking it. So they make it. <laughs> Watch what you intake. Because all that can play a role in your head. I take frequent social media breaks all the time. I do it all the time because I have to protect my peace. I have to protect um, people that may say negative things. I have to protect people from being in my business all the time. I have to protect myself from oversharing because we can overshare on social media, right? So there's protect what you intake, protect yourself. That's part of, you know, up in the head. So those are things that actually helped me. I think we're like 20 minutes in. So those are things that kind of helped me, not kind of, have helped me navigate depression. Being in a marriage, it can be difficult to get somewhere or, you know, navigate. It could be difficult, in other words, what I'm trying to say, it could be difficult trying to invest and nurture a relationship when you feel the way that you feel. But that's where communication comes into place. Either you can do something about it or you can make excuses. I posted that in my stories. A lot of us make excuses instead of decisions. You have to make the decision that, all right, I'm going to communicate what I'm feeling. I'm going to build my confidence up. You build confidence too by having a routine, taking care of yourself. I am going to guard my sleep. If I need it, I'm going to take it and protect my mind, which is most, most important protecting your mind even if it's family members that you have to protect yourself from they're not exempt protect your mind before you do anything else and you know just remember christ and all this he does nothing wrong so everything that you're experiencing everything that you're feeling is for a reason and i know my reason is to strengthen my brother Strengthen the person next to me. And this is why I'm sharing this particular podcast. Because it's so real. Depression, anxiety, it happens in marriages. It happens in relationships. Um, most majority of people are going to go through some kind of anxiety. Possibly leading into depression. And so I wanted to share my experiences. Things that have helped me overcome and get through it. And hopefully that you can overcome and get through it as well. So... If you have any questions, if you want to reach out to me regarding any kind of depression or anxiety, anything you're feeling in your relationship, please feel free to hit me up in the DMs. We can talk about it. I know exactly what you're going through. If you're somewhere, if you're not where you desire to be in life, know that you are where you're meant to be. Know that you have something to learn in this season of your life. And I'm here for you. I suffered with depression. I suffer with it. Um, mine just happens to be called by my period um, and we're working on that to get that under control but depression is depression postpartum depression mental mental what depression is depression no matter what form it comes in um, so yeah uh, and check on your strong friends too you know the people that you seek help from make sure that you are asking them how they're doing and letting them know that you're here for them letting them know that you have their back just as much as they have your back so keep that in mind everybody that looks strong could be going through something on the end um on the inside that's kind of just you can't see because they're just functional in their depression they just keep going so I just wanted to share that. Like I said, I hope to see you guys in episode 47. When we get to episode 50, I'm giving 50% off all my workshops, all my classes that are paid. We're going big when we hit episode 50. So yeah, again, I love you guys. I hope you guys have a blessed day. And if you are suffering with depression, I'm here for you. If you have anxiety, I'm here for you if you need me. And I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Have a blessed, blessed one, guys.